Namaste. It is my pleasure to introduce you to few of the case studies that we will be using in our coming program, Building Intelligent Healthcare Analytics. I presume you are aware of the broad structure of this program. I have outlined it in very briefly in one of our videos. In this video, I will try to use as simple a language as possible. I am illustrating some of the cases from machine learning applications. Deep learning techniques can analyze image data sets. Those case studies, though covered in our program, we are not covering in this short video. The first case study is regarding detecting cervical cancer in time. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cause of death among women. It has no symptoms in the early stages. Regular checkup is the only way to detect cancer in time. Symptoms appear only in the last stages, including vaginal bleeding. Given a number of characteristics, such as age, number of sexual partners, age of first sexual intercourse, number of pregnancies, smoking habits, use of hormonal contraceptives, with data regarding other STDs. A model can be built to predict risk of cervical cancer in advance. We have a total of 32 such measurable characteristics. And in our class, the attempt will be to build a model that can predict the onset of this cancer in advance. Then, the second, second case study pertains to predicting the status of fetal health. Reduction of child mortality is reflected in several of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and is a key indicator of human progress. The UN expects that by 2030, Countries and preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age, with all countries aiming to reduce under five mortality to at least as low as 25 per thousand live births. Parallel to notion of child mortality is, of course, the notion of maternal mortality, which as of 2017 accounted for around 2,95,000 deaths. The vast majority of these deaths occurred in low resource settings and most could have been prevented. Cardio octograms are a simple and most accessible option to assess fetal health, allowing healthcare professionals to take action in order to prevent child and maternal mortality. The equipment itself works by sending ultrasound pulses and reading its responses, thus shedding light on fetal heart rate, fetal movements, uterine contractions, and more. Given such signals, can we predict the status of fetal health in advance? That is the case study that will be attempting. The third problem relates to liver health status. Patients with liver disease have been continuously increasing because of excessive consumption of alcohol, inhaling of harmful gases, intake of contaminated food, pickles, and drugs. We have a data set of 416 lab liver patient records and 167 non-liver patient records collected from northeast of Andhra Pradesh. This data set contains 441 male patient records and 142 female patient records. Several attributes have been collected such as age, gender, total bilirubin, direct bilirubin, alkaline phosphate, total proteins, albumin, etc. Can we develop a model, a machine learning model to evaluate how bad the liver is and to that extent reduce 
the burden, diagnostic burden on the doctors. So that is a problem. Then the fourth problem is regarding analyzing vaccine tweets. Nowadays, populace in general is expressing various opinion about vaccines. We have a large number of tweets, tweets about various vaccines. Can we analyze such tweets about, about these and distill the sentiments being expressed by people? How many tweets, for example, are positive? How many are negative? Such analysis will reveal and give a lot of insight into what people are feeling regarding the vaccination and the vaccines. Another problem relates to healthcare provider fraud. Provider fraud is one of the biggest problems facing medical insurance industry. According to data, the total insurance spending increases in increase exponentially due to frauds. Healthcare fraud is an organized crime which involves peers of providers, physicians, beneficiaries acting together to make a fraudulent claims. Due to this reason, insurance companies have increased their insurance premiums and as a result, healthcare is becoming costly by the day. Healthcare fraud and abuse take many forms. Some of the most common types of frauds by providers are, for example, billing for services that are not provided, duplicate submission of claim for the same service, misrepresenting the service provided, charging for a complex or expensive service than was actually provided, billing for a covered service when the service actually provided was not covered. So goal of our analysis is to predict the potentially fraudulent providers based on the claims for filed by them. Along with this, we will also discover important features helpful in detecting the behavior of potentially fraudulent providers. Then another case relates to predicting hospital readmission of a patient. It is important to know if a patient will be readmitted in the same hospital. The reason is that if we know in advance, we can change the treatment in order to avoid readmission. In our database, we have three different target classes. That is, we have to make predictions for three kinds of patients. No readmission, he will not come back. A readmission in less than 30 days, or he will come back in more than 30 days. The data set represents 10 years of clinical care at 130 US hospitals. It includes over 50 features representing patient and hospital outcomes. Information was extracted from the database for encounters that satisfied a number of criteria such as it is an inpatient encounter, a hospital readmission, or it is a diabetic encounter. The length of stay was at least one day and at most 14 days. Laboratory tests were performed during the encounter. Medications were administ administered during the encounter. The data contains such attributes as patient number, race, gender, age, admission type, time in hospital, medical specialty of admitting physician, number of lab, lab tests performed, diagnos diagnosis, number of medications, diabet diabetic medications, number of outpatient, inpatient, and emergency visits in the year before the hospitalization and other attributes. The idea is to predict the three possibilities that I have mentioned just now. So these are the, some of the cases that we'll be covering, and I hope these cases interest you, and we'll be open to covering 
any other problem, any other case study that you think would be useful to you. Thank you and see you in the class.